I love my country. I will speak my mind. I, I, that's what I want to encourage you guys to do. That's why I come up here and I'm not politically correct. I, I say it how it is and I expect you guys to start doing the same. Stop being scared. And I'll get to that point in a second. But we have to hold these guys accountable. We have to, they have to know that they're actually going to be held accountable. They're going to be fired. They're going to, whatever it takes, that we're going to actually do our jobs as Americans that we haven't done in 50 years. Now, education. And I, I do practice what I preach on this one. My son is captain of the football team. My son is captain of the wrestling team. What I am most proud about with my son is he's a straight-A student. He's a straight-A student because his dad, me, makes sure he's a straight-A student. Because that's my job, that is my responsibility as a parent to make sure my son is a straight-A student. I love teachers. I think they're incredible. Teachers have one of the hardest jobs in the world. I just want to put that out there. I hate the teachers union. I love teachers. You know, we've taken all recourse from them. They can no longer spank children when they misbehave. You can't discipline them. You know, if they look at a child halfway sideways, they can get in trouble. You know, teachers have a hard job as it is. You know, don't make it any harder on them. The parents' job, you know, teachers teach, parents make their children learn. Education is key. Since the very beginning my son was born, and uh, something me and uh, or the cousin of uh, President Obama have in common, I delivered my son. And it was like that as well. I was stationed in the United States Air Force up in Alaska, and my ex-wife went into uh, premature labor, and there he was. Anyways, from the day that he could sit there and look at me, and, and, and I could read and, and talk to him, I've been reading the Bible. And he's like, well, Dad, what's that? What's well, the Bible, son? We're learning about God. And so he's always wanting to know about God because I started him early. Now, same thing with history and learning. You know, he'd see me reading a history book or see me reading about astronomy or see me reading about whatever number of things I love to read about. It's like, Dad, what's that? And I led by example. And so education is key, and that's where it comes down to. My dad had me reading the dictionary and the newspaper since I was in third grade. Every time I came across the word, this is third grade, mind you, you read the newspaper, there's a lot of words you're not going to understand in third grade. Every word I came to, I had to look up. That's all he told me my whole life was look it up. If I didn't know how to do something, my dad said, look it up. If I wanted to build something, my dad wasn't a builder, but I, I am. He's like, son, look it up. Look at a print. Look how to do this. Look it up. I'm 36 years old. I wake up in the middle of the night hearing those words. Look it up. <laughs> that is my message to you. Listen, I'm going to talk to you about responsibility, accountability, education, the Constitution, and what I call political castration. But my message to you tonight is to look it up. Don't listen to Sean Handy, Rush Limbaugh, Alan Combs, uh, whoever's up here to talk to you, to be honest with you, because you can't stand on my arguments. You don't know what I've learned. I could be wrong. Sean Hannity could be wrong. Rush Limbaugh could be wrong. It is possible. If you look it up and get the information yourself, then when you go against somebody and talk about them, you can have an educated conversation. You can have facts on your side. You can have, hopefully, principle on your side, integrity on your side. That's what it's about. You need to look it up. You know, a gentleman back there called term limits, and I understand the reason behind it. And for a short while, I thought the same thing. But ultimately, that just gives you a safety net not to do your job as Americans. Your job is to exercise your rights as American. And one of those rights is to become educated and informed. That's all I want you to do. You know, listen, I got opinions on everything. I mean, you know, everybody does. But they might necessarily disagree with you or agree with you. Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. The gentleman up here before me, a couple of speakers before me had it right. What we want are Americans. We don't want Republicans representing Republicans and Democrats. We need Americans to represent us. That's what we need. Somebody that actually truly loves this country and wants to see what's best for this country. That's what's best for the Republican Party or what's best for the Democrat Party. we got to move and get above and beyond that. So my message to you is look it up, please. Like I said, don't take my words for it. Go out and learn yourself about global warming, about cap and trade, about any of the issues that are coming down here. Ask these candidates that actually want to represent you. Ask them hard questions. That is your job. I don't know how many tea parties. I've been over well over 200 tea parties, 912 events. I hear some of the worst questions asked from our tea party groups, from my 912 groups. They're not hard on them. They're, they're just floating down the river still. You need to get in there and really learn about these guys and find out what they want to do, how they want to do it, and why they want to do it. You know, the most important thing is not experience. Again, experience means they're just experiencing screwing you. The biggest thing is about integrity. I'd much rather send somebody up there that doesn't know anything, but at least he's in, he got integrity. That means he'll do the right thing when no one's looking. If you guys haven't figured this out yet, I don't do speeches. I, I'm just up here talking. I was over there in the corner talking to God, asking him to help me 
get across to you. You know, hopefully God's going to be glorified when you guys leave this room because you'll take some of what I'm saying to heart. Um, and that's, that's why I'm here anyways. So we got individual responsibility, accountability, education is key. That's probably the most important thing right now. Constitution, that's, that, that, believe it or not, that's the most simplest one. It really truly is. You know, it's black and white and it's written in English. I don't need it to be interpreted. You guys can finish this for me. If it ain't broke, because I guarantee you the godly men, I'll say that one more time, the godly men that created the Constitution are a lot smarter than the men who are trying to run this country right now. And think about that. That's the key word, though. They were godly men. And they, they created the Constitution. And they told us, they've given us ways of making sure this country succeeded. As long as we keep God in this country, we will succeed. There's where our problem's at. God doesn't seem to be a forefront in our country anymore. That's something that needs to be remedied. That's going to be up to you. That'll be up to you. So the Constitution, like I said, real easy. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't you dare let the men and women trying to run the country right now change it. Because they don't know what they're doing. They really, truly don't. You know, a lot of people will say, well, Joe, you're not an expert. And I tell them, you damn straight I ain't an expert. Look where the experts have gotten us. <laughs> I'm not an expert. We need the common man, the common woman to step up and lead us. That's what we need. We need the steel worker. We need the plumber, the carpenter, the housewife, you know, the doctor, the, you know, whatever you want to say. That's who we need out there. Because they understand what it means to meet payroll. They understand what it means to actually pull up their sleeves and go to work. You know, I, I, this is only a quarter of what I do going around the country speaking. A lot of it's a lot of reading, a lot of history. I still work every day. I still plumb. I still build houses. You know, because it gives me a sense of satisfaction. The world of politics, you will not find satisfaction very soon. Which brings me to this point real quick, is yeah, November is coming. It's very important that you're involved. It's very important that you make an educated vote. But November, this November is just a pit stop. This is something that's got to be sustained the rest of your life. You need to start teaching civics to your children and your grandchildren if they're not being taught currently. I grew up on stories of the greatness of this country and how incredible it is. All my grandparents, all my uncles served in the uh, country. We had one guy go Navy. Never figured that out. <laughs> I'm joking. Damn, a little bit. No, but uh, I grew up on the greatness of this country and how exceptional we are and, and stories of bravery and loyalty. And, you know, I love this country and I, I, I want to impart that so much. This country is the most incredible thing in the world. And I do not want it to fail on my watch. I truly don't. I, I, it disgusts me, the men and women that are making a mockery. And they are. They're making a mockery out of the men and women who have died protecting the freedoms they have. So I ask you, please, do not be part of those people who are making this country a mockery or defiling their sacrifices. Don't do it. Don't allow it to happen. You know, because this, this country is the, truly is the last bastion of freedom. We cannot allow it to happen. Too many people made sacrifices and we can't, we can't, uh, can't dishonor them. So, that being said, Constitution was easy, like I told you. Now, let's talk about something fun. Political correctness. I hate it. A lot of people come up and say, Joe, you know what, that was a great question you asked. I said, well, you know, thanks, but I'll never do it. Look what happened to you. 